Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built. And uh, this week I plan on pulling the engine and then continuing on with the bodywork on my Datsun 240Z. First thing is I thought I'd cover a couple of the um, deliveries I got this week. I got myself a, um, a new front lip and some uh, side flares so you have a bit of an idea of where this uh, build is going. But um, can't keep playing around with this stuff. This is, uh, I've got lots to do before this gets fitted. So um, let's start pulling the engine. Removing this engine should be pretty easy because it's held on by one engine mount there and by a screw in a block of wood over on this side and the gearbox is being held up by the by a piece of rope tied around the exhaust so um, should be pretty easy uh, to disassemble it and get it out And the engine is out. Uh, the only issue I had was that the legs of the engine hoist are too high to fit underneath the, um, the lower control arms at the front. So I had to jack the front of the car up to get the, uh, the hoist through. And it was a bit of a, a juggling match with the jack and the hoist to get the, uh, the engine out. But uh, it's done, it's out. So uh, now I'm gonna strip the gearbox off and um, mount it up onto the engine stand. See how we go. Engine's out, it's on the stand, so um, now I'll uh, set this aside. This is uh, for another day, and uh, I'm gonna get back into that bodywork. All right, so I started on this last week. It's time to get this headlight bucket. Perfect, at least if I can do this one thing and get this one, the smallest part on the car pretty much right, um, I'll feel good about moving on. All right, that was a lot of banging and bashing and knocking around, but um, ultimately it is, um, it's back to a reasonable shape. Like, because of all the repairs, the previous repairs on this, it's going to need filler because there's, there's actually weld, like proud weld marks underneath and things like that. Like the metal's been heated and it's, um, it's already hardened quite a bit. So, uh, but, I've managed to uh, sort of remake this corner here where the split was. And um, now it's time to get the welder on there and uh, see if I can fix it up. There's a little bit of a hole at the bottom that I'm gonna have to try and fill and just see how I go, but it's split along there. The nose is a lot better, so you can see the split was there, and I've now welded it all up and beat it all roughly back into shape. It's not perfect, I mean, it's not a brand new piece, but um, I'm happy enough that with a tiny skim of uh, filler, that will be uh, nicely shaped back up again. So, I said I'm not a panel beater by any means. Um, another thing I discovered, I didn't notice before, is there's a Obviously when they damaged it, there's an extra piece that's been welded in behind this, uh, this strip here, which is not normally there. And I've just started cutting it out because it's in the way, because I've still got a little bit of a low in there that I need to bash out. So I've been cutting this uh, extra backing plate off and uh, trimming it up and uh, just try and make it a little bit nicer so that it fits just normally again.
this nose is far from perfect, but it's pretty reasonable, even the um, when it's sitting on properly. The lines are pretty good. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it's uh, so it's not perfect, but um, I'm happy enough with that to uh, move on and uh, also happy enough to use it and not have to get a replacement. I don't think it's going to take a mountain of bog to get it flat, just a, just a thin skim, just to get rid of the tiny little ripples because it's been repaired so many times, you can't get it perfect. All right, moving on. So as you might have guessed, I am saving my bonnet and uh, that means getting out and getting extremely dirty and messy and dusty again and doing some more grinding. All right, after some very, very dirty, messy work, and you can sort of see the level of damage that's in the front here. This has all been pushed in. That's the bit that I uncovered before. So I thought this would have traveled all the way along, but it's mostly the bit that I uncovered. That's more of a low there as well. And there's a low all the way along this edge here. That's all low. Most of it's reasonably flat up until the back here. This is all mangled mess. So I'm gonna to have to re-patch a whole area through here. That's gonna to have to be a new patch put in there. One of the most mind-boggling things is that this large dent right here is actually, you can actually get to it from behind. Some of this, I can sort of understand this here because you can't get to this from behind. Even though I don't agree with what they did, I can see why they didn't beat it out a bit more before they bogged it, they just filled it up. But this here, they've obviously gone through and repaired holes here but haven't actually pushed the dent out. Like, come on people, really? I'll flip it over and I'll show you what I mean. It's probably difficult to see, but uh, right here, you know, you can, get, you can get tools through there to actually sort of push that out at least a bit. Now let me emphasize again that I am not a panel beater, but um, from my basic research and the way I've been repairing these dents, for those of you who have no idea, um, basically what I'm doing is uh, mostly it's a hammer off dolly technique. So this is a hammer, this is a dolly. I've been using other things, whatever I can find, but basically, generally you don't want to have the dolly directly underneath your metal and hitting straight on it because that's just going to squish the metal and, uh, and straighten it out. To get a dent out like this, what I generally am trying to do is push up in the middle of the dent and actually hit around the outside, causing what I'm touching to push the dent up. Because usually if there's a dent in, there's a low in the middle, that means that there's a high all the way around the outside. And that's pretty much standard for most dents because the metal is, was in a shape and to get it out of shape, to push it in, it raises the other stuff up around it. So I'm just trying to push down the highs and bring up the lows to level it back out again. With a minute of basic, basic, unexperienced um, panel beating, I've managed to get 80% of that dent out. I don't understand why people just use so much bog when it, it honestly, it didn't take that much time. Okay, so I've beaten this up as much as I can by hand, and the next step is to get rid of these dents here. Now, because of all the framework underneath, I can't get to it. The old school way of getting rid of it would have been to use a slide hammer, which means drilling holes into the frame, into the panel, and then you've got a weight on a pole that you sort of screw in and pull the dents out. But you end up with holes all through your panel, and it's like Swiss cheese, and it's really nasty and not very nice. The newer way of doing it is with a stud welder, which is a, um, basically it's sort of spot welds little pegs onto the car that you can then pull the dent out with, the peg, and then uh, knock the pegs off and you're done. I can't justify the $500 for the, um, the stud welder, so I'm going to attempt to make something similar.
a whole bunch of cutting and welding, but um, what was I actually doing? Well, I'll, uh, I will demonstrate for you now. So I built this contraption. What this contraption actually is, all I've got is, is, is welded a couple of pieces of angle iron together that um, form as a nice big fat plate to uh, spread out some uh, load so I don't damage my car with a hinge and a pole and then a bit of square tube that, that slides over the top. Now, this, little, this piece of square tube actually has a little notch in it. And my idea is, is I'm gonna get a bunch of these nails and weld these nails to the car and they've got a, uh, a flat head on them. My plan is to weld them onto the car, then slot them in here. So they're slotted into that piece of metal and then using the, uh, the lever, I can pull up on this and actually get some leverage and, uh, and pull my dents out. So um, it's a very, very simple little contraption and if it works, um, a lot cheaper than 500 bucks. Okay, as you can see, um, it's hard to tell by the uh, angles here, but a lot of that dent has already been pulled out now. It still needs more work. And you can see that I over welded in a couple of spots and because uh, it got too hot and then I pulled it off and I did get holes in it. But uh, the bulk of it, I mean, these bits will just grind off and uh, it, it's, it's working really well. Overall, I think that works really well. Uh, considering it cost me maybe well, it cost me nothing because there were bits of scrap that I just had lying around the, uh, the workshop. I think it's worked uh, really well. So um, I still got to use it on a few more bits and pieces. And this was a particularly difficult stubborn dent that was really folded in. So it needs quite a lot of pressure to pull it out. And um, I'm thinking even most stub welders would probably uh, keep popping the studs off. So you have to, I have to just sort of work around it and do little bits and pieces. And there's still a fair bit more work to do on this, but um, Overall, my uh, homemade stud puller, I'm uh, quite happy. Little tips, um, I used galvanized art nails and I did grind off the tips of them just so that I could get rid of some of the galvanizing and they'd weld a little bit easier. But um, non-galvanized would probably be better. But um, overall, the DIY stud puller works. Okay, so I have spent ages now beating out this entire front area of the bonnet. It is definitely not perfect, but it's a lot better than it ever was before. Um, working with an old repair that was repaired badly, hardened metal and all the rest of it, it's gonna require some filler, but only a very minor skimp. There should be nothing major on this one at all. This is uh, reasonable. And uh, so basically now I've got the whole front edge of the bonnet as good as uh, I think I'm gonna get it. That means I must be done for the day. It must mean it's time for uh, fun facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hi guys, the very first Datsun cars were completed in 1931 and these were called the Datsun Type 10. Now these cars were actually built to take advantage of the Japanese government ruling that cars under 500 cc's could be driven without a license. In 1932, they built around 150, which were called the Datsun Type 11. Then in 1935, the Japanese government increased the capacity to 750 cc's, and the Datsun followed suit. And then these higher capacity cars were known as the Datsun Type 12. So in 1936, some of these earlier Datsuns were exported to New Zealand and then to Australia the following year. Japan went to war with China in July 1937, and from that time on, manufacturing was concentrated on building trucks for the military. All right, guys, we're done for another week. Um, I'm happy with the progress I got done on the, uh, on the Datsun. Got the engine out, got uh, the headlight bucket and the bonnet uh, tidied up a fair bit. There's still a lot more to do, so uh, uh, it'll keep me uh, busy for quite a while. If you want to help the channel out, go to our store and uh, have a look and you can, see, you can buy some shirts and hoodies and stuff like that. Um, I have done another Datsun uh, logo design that'll be uh, in this sort of area on t-shirts and hoodies. 
I still have to get that up uh, in the next couple of days. And um, as always, if you're enjoying the videos, please uh, hit that like button and uh, subscribe to my channel, Home Built by Jeff. And uh, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at the same place. See you guys. Maybe you should.